Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Let's Play Creatures Such As We with Trillian. I'm Trillian, and we are back. We're still on the same screen we were before, ready to sleep until tomorrow. So it is tomorrow, both in real life and in the story. So let's keep going. Also, I heard from the game designer, and she's glad that I'm doing the Let's Play. So I am pleased to do it. Uh, please give it some love, hit a like button, uh, subscribe, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then we can give her game a little boost up as well as my channel. That would be awesome. Win-win all around. Okay, sleep until tomorrow. Here we go. You wake up and unstrap yourself from the bed before stumble bouncing into the small bathroom. Your stomach is still in knots over that ending. It was a total existential punch in the gut. And now you're supposed to go out there and wow a bunch of snot-nosed tourists? You moan and stare into your mirror, really looking at yourself. Is this who you really are? Oh, I get to pick who I am. Hmm. Well, let's see. I could go for truth. <laughs> I could go for really wishful thinking. Or I could just kind of split the difference. We'll go with 30-something. Uh, ooh. Ooh, I've always wanted to be some cool ethnic thing instead i'm just a boring old north american but i guess this is my chance to be something different but i'll kind of make it more myself why not and this as well there we go at this point in your life you didn't think you'd be playing glorified tour guide on the moon but at least you're good at it and in a few years you'll be able to cash out they pay pretty well for isolation, tight living schedules, and the minor bone loss. Oh, you sigh into the mirror. New clients today, which is always a stressful unknown. You passingly wonder if you have time to go through character creation and creatures, but decide better of it. You can be patient. It's just one work cycle until you can game again. At any rate, you'd better get ready. You climb in for a military shower. Rinse, turn off water, suds up, then rinse again a process that would be cold if the bathroom weren't equipped with a heater to keep you warm. As you lather up, you can't help but dwell on the ending of the game. It just seems so sudden, so without resolution. It's frustrating. You play games to have something happy and positive in your life, and this was just depressing. You deal with that enough in real life. Failure, death. So why did they go with this ending? Why did they make a game that was unwinnable? Well, let's see. What are our choices? What, why do they make games like that? I don't know. Because it's art, man. So I, I'm tending toward they thought it was the most dramatic. Uh, I'm in the theater in real life, and we always go for, you know, the drama, right? A comment on death's inevitability. Well, I'm not sure that it was a comment on death's inevitability. It was more of a comment on betrayal's inevitability than anything else. We never really got enough of the story to know about that. They want you to replay to get the better ending. This just keeps coming up. And I think Linnea, uh, maybe I'm pronouncing it correctly now. It's a lovely spelled name. I just don't know how to say it. Um, but I think our game designer really wants me to replay to get the bender ending. It just keeps coming up. But I don't necessarily think that Collected Games wants me to. I could have beat it if I was better at the game. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think you were kind of locked in to the inevitable ending. So I'm going to go with they thought it was the most dramatic. They wanted to make a game that would stick with you, that would keep you thinking about it, dwelling on it. They intentionally wanted to cause you turmoil, to make you invested in the game and then pull one of these kinds of tricks on you. But it worked. You can't stop thinking about it. Maybe this was supposed to be the encouragement they wanted so that you'd convince yourself to replay it, to go back and make things better. See, there that is again. You rinse yourself off and step out to air dry in the warmth of the heater, still turning the ending over in your mind. Someone set out to make a game that was intentionally designed to put you through this kind of internal turmoil. Even if it's fixable, you sunk hours and hours into an experience that left you feeling depressed. That's not what you paid for. They could have written a better ending. They should have balanced combat better. Well, again, we don't really know enough about the game to know that that's true. 
Although, at least it was an ending that was actually interesting. And this goes back to the fact that you're still thinking about it, you know, right? But it worked. You can't stop thinking about it. I think that's true. Maybe you'll get a better ending from replaying in story mode. There it is again. They really want me to do this. I think I'm going to be inevitably doing that. Um, so, I... Uh, I still think it's pointless. Like my character and I are warring about this because I still think the game is pointless, but I'm not pointless, but uh, you know, meant to be this way. Um, I'm gonna go with that. You've been dwelling on it for this long. Maybe that's what they intended for it to make this kind of emotional impact. But even if that's what they intended, it feels pretty hollow. It doesn't feel satisfying. It feels like they made it to enjoy themselves, not for others to enjoy the result. Well, it'll go better next time. You shake yourself out of the introspection and focus on the here and now, getting ready. It just seems so mundane. Doing the same thing day after day just to stay in place, bending over backwards for this endless stream of disaffected tourists. Does it really matter? Well, of course it matters. It matters to you to them, and very much to Space Joy. Every day you bring your best. Every day you are your best. You glance over at the makeup box. As a director of activities, the company prioritizes materials that make you look more professional. It's a privilege many of your co-workers aren't afforded, so you're always split between not squandering it and not flaunting it. Okay, well, exciting lines, exciting colors, and extra flair. It all seems to be flaunting it. So but I didn't want to squander it. So I think this is the split. Plus, <laughs> again, working as a professional actor, I can tell you the amount of makeup you have to put on to look natural, like you're not wearing anything, is amazing. So I'm gonna go with this. It always feels a bit like doing art restoration. Just minor concealer to hide the flaws, highlights to emphasize the features that work, minor shifts in emphasis, but nothing too gaudy the kinds of changes you wish you could make in your own life. You look at yourself one last time in the mirror. You smile. Seeing yourself so put together helps reassure you you're doing pretty well with your life when it comes down to it. Maybe you're not doing what you originally wanted, but your job's important to you, and you're good at it, one of the best. You adjust your hair and then head on out. Maybe this week will be better. Okay, time to shine. You meet with a few stewards at the docking bay. They shy away from you, as always, but at least they still nod to acknowledge your presence. The facility shakes as the shuttle lands. Right on schedule. It's nice when there aren't any delays. The interior door starts its opening sequence. At the final click, you switch on that interstellar smile just in time to meet six new guests. There's something that feels familiar about them, but you can't quite place it you launch into the prepared intro. I hope you are all ready for a fantastic week of leaving the mundane worries of Terran life behind. You are now official astronauts, explorers, moonwalkers. Welcome to Space Joy's Moonbase 14. You gesture about the passageways of the facility before upping your chipper for the exciting paperwork announcement. IDs out, please. I'll need to check everyone in. Also, I am authorized to stamp your passports if you'd like. You step to the nearby podium and the tourists start shambling towards it. You scan the passenger list and your breath halts. They're the designers. The designers of creatures such as we. Also flesh weavers, soul traffic, and ether wings. The backbone of collected games. They're here. What are they doing here? <gasps> oh man, are they planning out their next game? That would be so cool. And well, even though they kind of drop the ball with creatures, that's not that big of a deal. And maybe they'll do better with their next project. In fact, maybe their next project will be about me, Julie, their cruise director. Okay, uh, it's really awesome to get to meet them. It'll be cool to see where they're going in the future. That ending's really bugging you. You're gonna have to focus on containing your annoyance. Oh, no, no, no. I don't feel annoyed at all. I feel very fangirly and like, woohoo, you know? Um, that ending's really bugging you. I 
don't think I want to like start harping on him about it. I played your stupid game. You know, like that seems like a bad way to go. If nothing else, then because I'm, you know, a space joy employee. So like, you know, can't do that. If they feel like I'm trying to root out what their next game is, they might get real defensive and cut me off. So I'm just going to go with all being all fangirly. It's really awesome to get to meet them. It sinks in. It's them. They're here. Sure, they're not rock stars, but rock stars just brush you off. These are real people, real creators. You're going to be able to pick their brains, maybe even see behind the creative process. Your mind bounces in anticipation. You let out a small squeak of excitement that you conceal <clears throat> behind a cough you think nobody notices. Maybe later you can ask them about the game, find out the easy way if you did something wrong, or at least figure out what the hell they were thinking. The first guy pushes forward his ID with a small waving motion, triggering a realization that you've been drifting off. You blush deep red. This isn't the most professional first impression, and your co-workers are watching. You swipe through the list with one hand while you examine his ID in the other. You check his facial features against the ID. He responds to the examination by smirking to the exact chiseled grin pictured on his ID. Hazel eyes with darker skin and black hair cut tight. He's somewhat heavy, but he carries himself well. You check off Andres Ingrid, lead designer, from the list. He pulls the card back and leans against the podium. I like your efficiency. Man, Space Joy really has it together. Okay. I like tight schedules. Well, that kind of sounds like a... Come on. So I don't think we want to go there. You have to be efficient up here. Well, that's probably true. Um, in your head and like some companies know. Um, maybe that's true. I don't know. But we don't know enough about this world. Glad to have you aboard. Yeah, let's just go with that. Let's just fangirl on him. Glad to have you aboard. <laughs> Andres chills his smirk into a more modest grin. Yeah, glad to be here too. I'm really looking forward to it. Well, gift shop time. He peers in through the passageway entrance, shouting back to the rest of the group. Hey, check it out. The original microtransaction model. It elicits a few chuckles, but they all seem a bit tired out. He hangs back at the entrance, waiting for the rest of the group to get checked in. The woman behind him sidles up to your right side. She has a bony, long face with even longer, straight black hair. She looks over at your check-in tablet, sighs, then clicks her tongue in disapproval. You pause your finger over her name on the list and look up at her. She backs off immediately. Oh, I... Sorry, it's not you. I just did some work on the back end of that program, and if you'll see that drop down, well, I still don't think that the GUI editors quite represented the functionality right. She blushes and pushes some of her hair in front of her face. Oh, sorry again. I just get wrapped up. She trails off. There's a hint of an Indian accent that matches her skin, but it feels mixed with something else you can't quite tell. You swipe off Sadri Connor, lead programmer, from the list. Okay, what do you think they got wrong with it? Well, that would be sort of getting to pick her brain, which is good, although we have all these people to check in, so maybe we shouldn't be, you know, chatting that much. It's always tough handing off work. Glad to have you aboard. It must be frustrating having someone mess up the system you're implementing. Oh no, I wouldn't want her to think that I was like, shut up, you're messing up my system that I'm trying to implement. Please move along. Wouldn't want her to think that. Hmm. Yeah, what do you think they got wrong with it? Let's... Well, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Okay. She blushes, waving it off. Oh, oh no, the technical stuff is not really that interesting. Just some efficiency standards I felt they didn't hit. Sometimes it could cause it to chug. She looks around at the small group. But I doubt you'd ever run into that problem. Andres leans against the wall. She's a great perfectionist, really has an eye for that sort of thing. I'm lucky to know her. And what a math whiz. He waves her over and points towards the gift shop. She joins him and looks in. Hmm, interesting layout. An expensive centerpiece surrounded by the cheapest object in the shop. Must trigger a lot of impulse purchases. She trails off as the two of them step inside and get wrapped up in window shopping. A younger man steps forward and tilts his head into a sweetly disarming grin. He has a wiry frame and a smooth face. 
his dark skin mixed with an East Asian facial structure. This place is just gorgeous, but it must be rough having to deal with rich pricks all the time. You startle. You're not accustomed to that kind of cutting honesty from guests. You check off James Meng, lead QA, from the list. You can't cop to a sucky job. Well, you can, but you really shouldn't to a guest. Okay, so let's see. <clears throat> rich pricks all the time. Definitely a great place to visit. Some guests are really kind of annoying. No, no, no. <laughs> I always feel like the last option is the one that's going to piss people off, and I don't want to do that. I'm good at customer service, I'll have you know. Um, it's definitely a great place to visit. doesn't really um, answer his question. I'm just going to go with it. It has its perks. He raises a perfectly groomed eyebrow. Oh, yeah? I suppose every now and then you must get someone really interesting. He starts to step away, then turns back to you. Hey, by the way, do most people usually jump around right away, or do they wait until they're alone? I'm just curious if we're following expected protocol or being ridiculously polite. But before you can even make to respond, he raises his hands in apology. Actually, I shouldn't hold up the line. You probably get jerks who do that all the time. I'll just wait. He walks off to the side and starts testing out small hops. An older woman approaches the podium next, frizzed hair salted with grays and a pale face without any makeup. Her dreamy smile evaporates into embarrassment. She doesn't have her ID out. She pats over her suit in a panic and then backs off, waving ahead the next woman in line. Unfortunately, that lady is wrapped up in an electronic device, completely oblivious to the awkwardness unfolding in front of her. You clear your throat loudly. That doesn't get the second woman's attention. James looks up from his moon hops to watch the situation unfold, and you hear a hopefully unrelated burst of laughter from inside the gift shop. The woman finally finds her ID. Sorry, she grins sheepishly. I was just thinking about what sorts of ghosts might be found in a place like this, and I got a bit lost in it all. Her accent is distinctly Midwestern. You check off Diana Thorne, head writer from the list. James tries to reconcern himself in the jumping, but it's obvious he was hoping for something a bit more exciting to have shaken out. You focus your attention on Diana. Um, yeah, ghosts aren't real. That's it. The fourth one always seems to be the piss off the guest option. Glad to have you aboard. You know, after the first one, I don't think I should just keep saying that. You'll have to tell me their stories. Well, she's the head writer, right? So she could probably make up a bunch of stuff. But I'm just going to empathize with her and say, yeah, I've wondered about that too. Don't worry about it. You know. She grins almost wickedly. I'd be curious to hear an expert's thoughts on the matter. You must have some interesting tales to tell. She tilts her head, fixating on something inside the gift shop, and moves around the podium in a path that does not match her gaze. You amaze at the fact that she doesn't bump or trip on anything. James attempts to wave her down, but she doesn't notice and enters the gift shop. James shrugs and then follows after her. Hey, Diana, how would you like some armor made of moon? His voice trails off. The next woman is shorter and somewhat heavy set. You feel she's Asian, perhaps Pacific Islander. She's completely absorbed in her device, the glare reflecting off her large glasses. You clear your throat a second time, more forcefully. She startles, putting the device into a pocket while sizing you up. You hear a faint mumbling, proportions, and then nothing else. She adjusts her glasses and then belatedly catches herself. Carried away there. Would you mind terribly if I sketched you? You smile politely at Ren Cho, art director, as you check her in. Um, okay, you guys. These are the game designers, and they keep asking questions about this place, and now she wants to sketch me. What if they make a game about me? That would be so awesome. It could be the adventures of your cruise director at the moon base. Oh, that would be so exciting. Okay, yes, please, please sketch me. Yes, 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 yes. I'd be honored. She looks you over, then smiles by closing her eyes. Fantastic, she adds before stepping aside. As she leans against a nearby wall, Ren glares at the last guy in line. He's been hanging back this whole time and seems even now hesitant to move up. He gives Ren a half smile and she quickly pulls her device back out and buries her face in it. You hear more laughter and chatter from the gift shop as the rest of the group pour out. The last guy seems to realize he can no longer delay his check-in. He's pasty white and slightly older but built with shoulder-length bleach blonde hair. 
You catch a glimpse of a white shell necklace under his spacesuit. He takes a deep breath and walks up. He stares past you awkwardly and breathes way too heavily. You follow procedure, despite there being only one person he could possibly be. Name? You cordially ask, attempting to get him to focus. He procures ID, affirming Grant Norell. Strange, he's not part of the development team, at least not that you recognize. Could he be a new addition? He leans against the podium and attempts to carry a conversation, running his fingers through his sweaty hair as he fumbles out. And you are? You almost feel bad for the man as you both point to your name tag and say your first name aloud. Ooh, I get to put in my name. I shall put in my name. Oh, wait, I need my other keyboard. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Trillion. Okay. His eyes flutter as what you say seems to barely even register. Trillion, did I, did I get that right? His sweating intensifies. He must be really nervous around people, but it's your job to smile and accommodate. Um, yeah. See, this fourth one is always the rude one. And that's pretty rude, too. I don't need to correct him because he said it right. So I'm going to go with, yes, that's right. But by now, he's lost his ability to focus on words. He staggers a few steps, then vomits a slurry of liquid. Ugh. Much of it splashes onto the floor, but a good amount stains the expensive company-owned shuttle suit. He compounds the stains by wiping his chin on the sleeve. The other guests drop their banter and stare at him, horrified. You glare at one of the stewards, who then drops what he was unloading to get some cleaning supplies. You turn your attention back to the sick man. Well, that explains that. This is not exactly the smooth check-in that you were hoping for. He continues retching, now spitting out clear liquid and streaming apologies between gasping breaths. He clearly needs someone to escort him to the med bay, but it'll also take some professional charisma to lift the gloom this incident will impart on the rest of the group. You take the immediate action of notifying the medical staff with your walkie-talkie, but now it's time to deal with the disaster directly. You weigh options. Send him with the remaining steward or escort him yourself. Yeah, somebody else can take him. Plus, ugh, I'm already sick of him puking. Um, so let's go to smooth things over with the main group. Only we're going to pick that up for episode three. So I'll see you back here. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe so you can keep up with the story. Be well.